Today we're going to be troubleshooting a 2004 Honda Civic blower motor problem. No blower motor. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to verify that operation. We have the ignition key on at this point and we're going to turn the fan on see if we get anything which we don't. And it just so happens on this model uh, 2004 it also applies and this video applies to the 2001 through 2009 Honda Civic. They have an onboard diagnostic that you can initiate by uh, holding down the recycle button and the rear window defog button and uh, turning on the ignition key, AC light on, release both buttons and that will go through a self diagnostic and if it finds an issue it will uh, indicate it in a number of flashes on the recycle light. So we're going to do that now, we're going to turn the ignition key off. We're going to hold down both buttons, recycle, rear window defogger, turn the ignition to the on position, AC light off, release both buttons, and it found a problem, there's our code, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. repeating 12, 12, 12, so it only found one code, and that is 12. And that indicates a blower motor problem. So that's verified by the diagnostic also. What we're going to do now is take a look at the uh, schematic, and we're going to go from there. So let's take a look at the schematic and come up with a plan of action. First we have the uh, blower motor. In order for this blower motor to operate, we need two things. We need power and we need a good ground. Power is coming from fuse 12, 40 amp fuse under the hood through a blower motor relay to the uh, motor positive end. And we have a ground. The ground of the motor is being su supplied via the blower motor transistor to a ground at G502. Now this, this uh, 12 volts uh, that powers the uh, blower motor fan is hot at all times and uh, it comes from a blower motor relay which is energized anytime the ignition key is in the on position and that fuses under the dash, uh, fuse box under the dash under the uh, steering wheel area. And we can be pretty sure that this was working because this also powers some other things uh, like defogger relays. So all that stuff's working. So we're pretty assured here that uh, that fuse is okay. And that fuse supplies power to the uh, blower motor relay. So anytime the ignition key is in the on position, the blower motor relay is energized, closes contacts between 3 and 4, and supplies 12 volts down to the blower motor. And we're going to make sure that uh, this relay is working, this blower motor relay, and make sure we're getting 12 volts at this point. And then we're going to continue on down to the blower motor, make sure we're getting 12 volts at the blower motor. And at that point, if we're getting 12 volts to the blower motor, we can actually supply a ground to this point, and that motor should come on. So that would be a test to make sure that that motor is actually good. And if that's the case, if the motor's good, our suspect is either a bad connection to ground or this power uh, blower transistor here. Okay, let's move on to the uh, next step. Uh, we're going to check the uh, relay and the fuse for the blower motor. That's under the hood. We'll remove the fuse box cover and locate what we need to check. There's a diagram here that shows the layout, and we also have a paper diagram, which is a little easier to read here on the video. But we're going to check the blower motor relay, which is RL6, and the blower motor fuse, which is fuse 12. 12 and on, let's see, we'll turn it around. RL6 is that guy there. 12 would be right in front, so uh, that's our fuse. So we're going to check those out real quick. Okay, now let's move on. Let's check those two components. We're going to take them both out. We're going to check them out of circuit with the meter and the help of the battery. Check the fuse first. 
We have some jumpers already set up. These are just standard jumpers you can buy at any hardware store, Harbor Freight or Home Depot. And the spades kind of go right in the uh, bottom of the fuse. This one we can't take just, oh yeah, it's got a little cover. We could take the cover off and test it, but we're going to test it this way here with the ohm meter. Okay, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. Okay, we've got a good fuse. It's not open. Let's see what the lead resistance is. Hmm, a 0.3, so that was about 0.1 itself for the actual fuse. And we're going to take these same jumpers. Again, these jumpers are the same ones you could buy at Harbor Freight or Home Depot. We're going to look at the uh, relay here. We have four sets of contacts. This is the coil, the smaller contacts. That's going to be our electromagnet. electromagnet. And these are the uh, contacts that's going to carry the current to the uh, lower motor. You see they're larger contacts and they're more surface area, less resistance at the higher current. And we're going to put these on the coil side. And if you want to verify that's a coil, you can ohm it out. We'll look at that, and it should so. Let's see what it shows. Okay, that's the coil, 91 ohms. So that's the coil. If you were to uh, check the contacts, this is a normally open relay. The switches are the switch itself is normally open, so it should be infinity here for the OL. Okay, that's an open circuit, so that's what to expect, but we're set up now uh, with the uh, meter across the contacts and we've got uh, our jumpers at the uh, coil. So we're going to turn that coil into electromagnet and close the switches and we should get a closed circuit here. And we do, there we have another 0 0.3, 0 0.3 ohms open. Closed. Okay, got a good relay. And you always want to, sometimes you, you can uh, do a preliminary and kind of verify it by just hearing the click, but you always want to check the contacts, especially if you're controlling an inductive load, because when those contacts close, they're car carrying current, and as soon as they open up, that little small gap arcs normally. It will arc. It will cause pitting on the contacts and even actually break off some of the surface area on those contacts. So you'll hear it click, but uh, you won't have a closed circuit. So always to get a real good check of it, you need to check across the contacts and make sure they're essentially uh, zero ohms or close to it. Okay, we'll move on to the next step. One of the other fuses that were related to the blower motor was fuse 14, which was under the dash, under the uh, steering wheel. Uh, we were able to eliminate that as a problem because the uh, self-diagnostic operated. If that fuse was blown, you wouldn't be able to run the self-diagnostic. But in any case, let's take a look at that and show you where that is. And uh, just in case you have to check that, it's under the uh, steering wheel. You remove this panel here. Panel slides out. Kind of hard to get to. It's way back in the corner here. And it's the 10 amp fuse right there. Uh, and, and that's uh, the one that uh, you need to check uh, for the uh, the one that we were able to eliminate. But it's, it's working. But if you did, you'd get the... Uh, they have, there's a fuse puller. It's actually in the uh, under the uh, hood fuse box and this comes uh, this is should be in your one of the fuse boxes under the hood and it's a fuse puller and we're going to use that to kind of aid in taking that out because that's kind of a tight place and you want to slip this end over the fuse and I'll show you how to see if you can get that in place 
And get my hand out of the way where we can see it with the camera. And that's the 10 amp fuse. Just comes right out. Get the fuse holder over it, it'll pull out. And you should be able to stick it back in with your hand here without going through all that. Get the fuse holder puller. go light slot okay that's in and then you just pop the panel back on and and you're good to go there and to access the blower motor and blower motor transistor we're gonna have to remove this panel just below the glove compartment essentially what it does is you have to grab it at the top here it's got little latches it's a one two, three latches, and pull that down, and it's got some little clips here in the back, and that just pops right out, and then we have access here to our blower motor, is right here, and the uh, power transistor. So now we've got the panel removed, and we're going to check some voltages. First thing we're going to check is see if we have 12 volts at the uh, blower motor itself. And that'll be this plug right here. And the release is up here at the top. And we'll release that, the blower motor. And we've got ourselves a good ground, the chassis ground, bare metal ground for our meter. And the positive lead, we're going to see if we have 12 volts at the uh, actual blower motor. Which we do. We have 12 volts there at the motor. The other end is uh, the other end that actually goes actually out to the uh, tram, the uh, blower motor transistor. We are not seeing anything there because it's it's essentially uh, not operational at this point. Uh, we don't have the uh, thing connected, so we have 12 volts at the motor. So we will reconnect that, and we'll take the uh, connector for the blower transistor. Uh, we'll take that out, we'll release it. And we'll look at, turn the pin around, we have our diagram here. And we're looking at the blower motor wire harness. And that's pin 2 and that's pin 4. And we're going to check for voltage at uh, Pin 4 is where the voltage comes in from the motor. It's, man, we should have 12 there. On pin 2. Now we got to turn the ignition key on. Actually, pin 4. We're actually looking for pin 4. Ignition key is on pin 4, we have 12 volts, pin 4, and pin 2 is our ground, and it appears to be, uh, mm, yeah. that's going through the blower transistor, but we want to make sure there's 12 volts there, so there's 12 volts going to the blower transistor, and the blower transistor is going to... Uh, complete the circuit to ground for the motor to turn the motor on so we're going to kind of simulate that right now we're going to jumper pin 2 to pin 4 and since we're going to bypass the blower transistor I'm going to get this thing to see if it will turn on okay there's our blower motor our blower motor is blowing, so at this point, it uh, looks like it's what it normally is in these cases with the blower motors, it's the blower motor transistor. So we're going to take another look at the schematic and kind of go through what we just did, and uh, then we're going to uh, take that blower transistor out and take a look at it. And on this 2004 model, that one of the screws, that screw on the right side is fairly hard to take out. It's kind of in a tight place so we're gonna have to use something like a uh, offset screwdriver or something because you can't get in there with a straight screwdriver so just be reminded of that if 
on some of these models you're going to need something similar to this to get that one screw out. Okay, so let's go from there. So let's take a look and see where we're at at this point and uh, take a look at what we just did. Under normal conditions, conventional current flow would go from the source through the fuse, through the uh, blower motor relay, down to the motor, through the motor, through the blower power transistor, back through ground, ground, and back around to the source. What we did is we first thing we did is we removed the uh, connector from the uh, blower motor itself, and we checked pin one. We had 12 volts, so that path is complete. Then we went to pin four on the blower power transistor. 12 volts at pin 4. So that path is complete. So we've got a complete path between that fuse all the way to the uh, blower power transistor. And the last thing we did is we jumpered pins 4 and 2, essentially bypassing the power transistor, completing the path to ground and back through the source and we and the blower motor operates seems to be operating normally when we bypass the blower transistor so in most cases uh, this is the uh, result of or this is the end result of the troubleshooting blower motors It's usually if you didn't have a problem with the fan or it wasn't making noise or uh, it wasn't any other issue that just quit all of a sudden it's normally this power transistor so we're going to take a look at that and more detail Okay, we have the uh, blower transistor out now and on the bench, so let's take a look at that and see if we can find out what's wrong with it. First off, let's kind of talk about what's going on here and kind of uh, take a look at the controls on how this uh, blower motor is controlled. How do we control the speed? The speed, the responsible, the speed is actually controlled by this control unit here. This is the starting point. And this is your instrument panel. This is on your instrument panel. That's what's behind it. Here's the uh, the uh, control for the uh, blower motor. It's off position, and then you have the uh, on, and you have you can vary it from off all the way on to full. But what's inside this is that's a microcontroller unit, and that controls. That's what you're controlling. You're actually uh, sending a signal through this control unit through the uh, control transistor, this, this control channel here, across this divider, which sends a voltage essentially to the, the gate of this uh, MOSFET, in-channel MOSFET, that either turns it on full or, or cuts off current completely. And that's done by varying the voltage here with respect to the, uh, the source, making this more positive than the uh, source increases conduction, making it less positive, decreases conduction until the voltage is actually zero here, which shuts off the current flow through the motor. So we're going to look at these three branches. This is the feedback branch that goes back to the controller to let it know that it did understand the signal it did send. So let's, let's first take a look at uh, our transistor here. We have pins one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we're going to take a look at this first channel here, which we have to be mindful of the uh, polarities here since we're this is a transistor that has to be biased correctly in order to check it. So pin four is the drain, which is normally positive. And pin four, bottom pin. Pin 2, which is ground to the source, is the top. Go to the diode position. And what we have is an open, which we should have. There's no voltage at the gate, so this is essentially off. There shouldn't be any conduction through there, through the, through the uh, channel, the end channel, at the, with a zero gate voltage with respect to the uh, source. So we're going to switch it over. And we're going to just reverse the leads on pins 2 and 4. And in this position, we'll have conduction, which is 
indicated here by the voltage drop across the uh, channel the, from uh, source to drain, which is 0 0.451 volts. If you have a voltage drop, you have current flow, so there is current flow at this point through it, which is normal for this testing that we're doing, this preliminary test. What we didn't want to see is open on both directions. If we were from uh, 4 to 2, we don't want from 2 to 4 to be open. It's okay, forward bias position open, the opposite, uh, reverse bias uh, conduction. So that appears to be good. So we're going to check the other branch here, which is this branch, which is feedback back to this unit. And that's pin 4 and 3, which are the bottom pins. And here we're not we're concerned about polarity, and we're going to go right to the ohms setting. And we have 1.4K, which is correct. We have a 1.5K here, which is within 5%, and that's uh, doable. That's correct. No problem there. Now we're going to take a look at where the signal actually comes in from our control unit through this voltage divider, and it applies the voltage to the gate. And that's pins one and two. One and two are the top two pins. Okay, one and two, open. Well, that's not good. We're not getting a signal, which uh, makes sense. If this uh, branch is open, we'll never get a signal to turn on this transistor in order to get current flow, in order to turn on the motor. So that seems to be our problem, which is normally what we've been seeing, it's normally this uh, thermal cutoff is open. It should, it is set to a trip at 114 C. It's directly on the heat sink along with the transistor. And it's a protection device to keep the thing from burning up. So let's take a look inside and we can actually measure right across that and make sure that should be essentially one ohm. A good one's about one ohm or less. And we'll pop that open. And if you can see, that is the uh, that is right down there on the heat sink, along with the transistor, is the uh, thermal cutoff unit component. And let's take a look at that on the ohms. Uh, let's see where you can see the meter. Yep, it's open. So what we'll do is we'll replace that, we'll open it up, desolder these three, these two, pull the board, replace the uh, transistor, and the, uh, we normally replace the transistor. Replace the transistor uh, also, since we're in there. And you can do a repair on this for probably less than $5. Transistor itself is about two dollars, and you can buy them uh, on eBay sometimes uh, seven for five dollars. The thermal cutoffs are normally cheap. Even uh, the NTE parts you can get for maybe for one a dollar ninety-eight for one of these, or you can get them on eBay. So you can get a dozen of them for maybe six dollars, five or six dollars. You can get a dozen of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and replace it. We'll do a video later on opening this up and replacing the components if you want to do that for yourself so you have a kind of a guide to that. And then we're going to put it back together and see how it works. And also, just as a second note, all these diagrams that we're using on this video, they'll be available in the uh, description section. There will be a, a download link for the uh, documentation that we're using here. Okay, we've uh, repaired the uh, blower transistor and what we've done is we've kind of wired it out with some jumpers from the connector to the uh, transistor so we can take some readings and uh, we're going to look at the uh, input signals that come from the uh, heat control unit that uh, operates the uh, MOSFET. It essentially uh, puts a positive voltage which causes a positive charge on the gate that uh, controls the conductivity of the uh, channel which is uh, controls the current from the uh, dra the drain we're talking about conventional current from the drain to the drain to the source 
But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll turn it on now and uh, let's see to the first position. The switch essentially has 10 positions, off, including the off position. This is the first position. At that position, it looks like the uh, transistor is being supplied at almost 2 volts at the gate, which is right here. That's where we're measuring the voltage at. And this is the current uh, that's going through the uh, lower motor. Essentially about 2, uh, I don't know, 2.7 amps. And the next position. Voltage increases, so the conductivity of the channel increases. Couple more clicks. Nine volts, okay. It's full on now. We're drawing about 15.6 amps. So it's about average for these things, would be about 15 amps or so. And uh, the voltage at the base here uh, from the uh, control unit, uh, right at 9.8. And in order to control the conductivity, that's how they uh, bias the transistor by. Uh, providing a positive charge to the gate. On the scope, it doesn't show just a little bit of ripple voltage on the base signal. And that control panel is actually right there. That's actually the control unit right there. And inside there, there's a microcontroller uh, that controls uh, the uh, whole AC uh, heating system, the fan, and the rest of the, uh, the uh, conditioning units. Okay, now we're going to disconnect all this and uh, put the thing back together. And then uh, we'll uh, go from there. Yeah, but uh, this is normally the problem when you have these blower motors. If you haven't had any blower motor issues in the past or nothing leading up to it, it's usually uh, it's not the motor, it's this uh, transistor. Another area of concern are your cabin filters. The amount of air your blower can deliver depends directly on the amount of air it can draw in per second through those filters. In order to take a look at those, which they're behind the glove box, uh, you open your glove box and there's two pins here on the side you can get from the opposite, from the outside. And you need to push those in. On some models you push them in and uh, lower the box and on the 2004 you actually push them in and you actually remove these pins. So we'll do that now. We'll push them in here. And they actually come out on this model and that's what they look like, one on each side. It doesn't matter the left or right, they're both the same so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. And they twist out here. Come out, the glove box drops down. And then right back here, we'll take a closer look at that and uh, show you where those filters are. Okay, let's take a look at those filters now. They're right here. We have to press in on this little lever here. Just press in here on this side. That uh, moves out of the way. You can remove this whole piece. And you have two filters here. There's one and there's the second one. The first one you can pull out the, by grabbing that tab, pulling out the first filter. Then pull this tab, it slides over, and pull out the second filter. Okay, well, these filters have been changed before this video, but we'll show you a filter that was originally came out here before we put the new filters in. And to reinstall those filters, you just put them back, kind of like the same way you took them out. That first filter that you're going to put back in, the uh, tab is over to the uh, left, because it's going to slide to the right all the way in. Slide it over. And the uh, second filter to go back in, its tab will be to the right. 
And if you don't get them in the correct way, you can't close the door, so it's kind of a self-check. And this goes back in. That tab goes in right here. And it fits back there, and that's it. And those should be checked. Actually, it draws air in through the uh, filters, down through the fan, and the just downstream of the fan is your power transistor. It also cools the heat sink on that uh, that transistor to make sure it uh, stays uh, below its operating temperature. Now to reinstall to get your glove box back in, we need to insert these back in. What's going to happen is you're going to insert these through like that and they're going to click back in place. The only issue is it's a little bit because you need to get the box closed far enough so you can get, initially get them inside in here. So we'll do that. Get it up far enough where we can uh, close that one's closed. Okay, get this one in here. Okay, initially get it up there far enough. Okay, the box is back in place. Okay, everything's back together now. Fan's working. We've got a blower. It's uh, operational. High. Adjustable all the way to off. And as a last check, we'll run that diagnostic one more time. And uh, we shouldn't have any error codes. Again, the key's off to the off position. Fan switch off. Hold down the recycle. Rear window defogger button. Ignition key to the on position. Both lights on. Release. And it's going to go through a self check. Okay, during the self check, it's going to actually run the fan from high to low and then off. And no error codes. Looks like we're good to go. Until next time.